Once we have made a character or any 3D model in Blender, we need a way for Godot to read that model. It's not possible for Godot to read the .blend files from Blender, so we have to save the model in a format that Godot can understand. In this tutorial, we will see how to export a model from Blender to Godot, and what options does Godot give us to configure the way those files will be imported. So let's start! the textures we have been using for texture in our character are saved only internally in the .blend file. They are not accessible from external programs. To use these images outside Blender, we have to save them into files. For that, we change to the Texture Paint workspace. I will export only the texture with the lowest resolution since it works just fine and will save some memory when running the game. We can save this as a PNG file in the image menu on Save As and we write the name we want for our file. To export the 3D model into Godot, the simplest way with Blender version 2.8 is to save the file in GLTF format. To do that, go to File, Export, GLTF. I won't change any options for now and just save it. In Godot, we start a new project. In the Project Manager, press New Project. You can change the path of your project folder. Write a name for your project. I will write Character Tutorial. Press on Create Folder and then Create an Edit. The Godot editor will open and is ready to start working on the project. To import the model and the texture into our project, we can go to the File Explorer, go to the Files location, select both the texture and the model, grab them and drag them into Godot's window. To better see the files Godot have created on importing the model, I will resize the Assets panel. The first file we have is character.glb. This is the file we have copied. The glb extension stands for binary gltf. This is the character's texture. This file is created always with each new project and is the default environment, not relevant right now. Later we see a lot of files with the .material extension. Those are the files that define the materials in the imported mesh. And lastly, the icon.png is also created automatically by Godot and is the icon of our application. If we see the materials files, we know that their names correspond to the ones we gave in the .blend file. We have a material called material here for one of the models and these other materials in the other model. And for each one of them, Godot has created a file. To open the model we have imported, we can make double click over the glb file and press new inherited. In the scene doc, we can see the content of the imported file. There is a root node, which by default is of type special. Then we have two children nodes of type mesh instance, mesh and materials mesh. If we go back to our Blender file, we see that these names come from the names we gave to the meshes here. If we want to change the names in the Godot scene, the best way to do it is by renaming here in the .blend file and re-exporting it, and the changes will be reflected automatically in our Godot project. Now, what options do we have when importing a 3D model in Godot? Well, for that we have to change to the import doc. To explain better, I will rearrange the docs. The first thing we have here is the name of the file we have selected in the Assets panel. Then we can select the type of resource Godot should be importing us. In this case, the only option is as a scene, but for instance, an OBJ model can be imported as scene or a mesh resource. Then we have the class of the root node. By default is special, but I always prefer it to be a kinematic body if it's a character. This option should modify this node, but it won't make it immediately. Whenever you want to apply your changes, you have to click on reimport. Now we see that the type of the root node has changed to kinematic body. Root name is the name given to the root node. Root scale is a factor we can apply to pre-scale the meshes inside the imported scene. If we change this value and re-import the file, we see that the model is not updated. This happens sometimes with this and other resources because the data residing in memory is not being updated with the new data from the file in the hard drive. In this case, we have to reload the scene. We close it, save the changes as character.tscn and then open the scene. Now the mesh has been updated. I will put this back to 1 and re-import, nothing changes. 
Another way to update the scene without having to close it is by going to scene, revert scene. If this dialog appears, it means you have non-saved changes in your scene, and reverting the scene will make you lose all those changes. I will press revert because I don't really have nothing to save, and we see that the model is updated. The custom script is useful to somehow customize your imports. I will cover this in more detail in a future tutorial. Then we have the option to store the scene as a single file, just as we have it, or to make each node to be an instance of a separated scene that will be saved in different files. If we re-import with this option, Godot will create more files that correspond to the nodes in the scene. If we save with Ctrl S, and reload the scene we see that the nodes have this icon, meaning that now these are separated scenes. If we click here, it will open the scene file corresponding to this node and the same with the other. We go back to the default option, reimport, save, and now the scene is back to normal. In the material section, we first have the location. It can be in the mesh or in the node. What it means is that the materials can be set in different parts. To see it, we go to one of the mesh instance nodes. Here in the inspector, we can see all the properties of the selected node, materials mesh. We see here a material section that we can expand, and it appears all these empty fields. Those are materials slots, the nodes materials slots, meaning that we can have multiple mesh instance nodes with the same mesh and change the materials per node. If in the import options we select node as the materials location, here it's where they would appear. But because the location is mesh, the material are inside the mesh resource that lies in here. So nodes and resources are different concepts. Here I have expanded the properties of the mesh resource. But to visualize it more clearly, I will open it by expanding this arrow and selecting edit. We can see it says changes may be lost. This is because what we are seeing correspond to the data from the hard drive. This information matches the data from the GLTF file we got from Blender, so to speak. We find these surface sections that correspond to the materials assigned to the mesh. The concept of surface is somehow more advanced, but for now we just need to know that each material in our original model will correspond to a surface in the mesh, and that materials are assigned to these surfaces. And here, in this array mesh resource, we cannot change which material is assigned to which surface. So that's the difference between having the materials in the mesh, that means the materials are here in the mesh resource, or in the node. That would put the materials in these material slots. Even if the materials are said to be in the mesh, we can use the node's material slots to replace or overwrite the original material. If I expand this material slot and press load, I can select any of the other materials and the material for that surface will be replaced. There is another way to replace the materials of a mesh. In this geometry section of the geometry instance class, there is a property called material override. If we add a material, we see that the material is a applied to the whole mesh, overriding all the materials from the mesh instance node and from the array mesh resource. To recover our material, we expand the arrow and press clear. We also have this reset arrow, but in this particular case, it's not working. Next, we can configure the storage of the materials. With the files option, it will create separate files for the materials just as we have it. To explain the built-in option, let's have a look to the Godot project folder. First, we see that apart from the character.glb we have exported from Blender, there is the character.glb.import that doesn't appear in the assets panel. This file is where all the import options we are setting right now are stored. This is responsible of how this model file is imported in Godot. We also see this .import folder that doesn't appear in the file system doc of the Godot editor either. Here is where all the resources are imported. We can find files with names that make reference to the character.glb. GLB. These are actually the files that Godot uses for resources, but we don't really have to care about these files. These files are there just for Godot, and we have to think like if we were using directly the original file. That's the magic of Godot's implementation. Back to the import options, when it says to make a built-in storage, it means that the materials will be stored in this file inside the .import folder. The next option, keep on reimport, is usually best to keep ticked. That means that whatever change you make to your materials, if you need to reimport your model, Godot won't discard those changes by overwriting the materials files. Next, we have the meshes section. We can say Godot to compress the mesh data, and short tangents will make sure that your model works fine with lights. 
Storage is the same as before with the materials. Light baking gives options to generate light maps. And lastly, we can tell Godot to create a folder to store all the generated files on import. I will cover the animation section in another tutorial because I don't have any animations right now. I will show the mesh that has the material with the texture. It is completely black because something is wrong with the material. We have to specify which is the texture we are using to set the albedo color. The only thing we have to do is to load the texture and the material is fixed. We can make changes in the materials files, like change the color of the shirt and that will be immediately reflected in the model. And we can even apply to this model the material of the other as a material override and it will work perfectly fine. So note how even if we have multiple surfaces in this mesh, we are now using a single material. Back in Blender, what I really want to export is just one of the meshes, the one with a single material. With this mesh selected, go to File, Export, GLTF. In the options, make sure to tick on selected objects. In this way, Blender will only export what is selected and not the full scene. We can replace the file we have exported previously or go directly to the Godot project and overwrite the file we have there. And now in Godot, we see that the character scene has only one mesh node and we are ready to work with the character.